Thank you, Esther. Hello, everyone. Uh, as Esther has mentioned, my name is Faith Njeri. I'm an environmental specialist. I'm very passionate about environmental conservation and community development. And uh, I have been uh, volunteering with VWB here in Kenya as a national volunteer. Um, I've been uh, engaged in uh, what Esther has just mentioned, uh, the program that is called Volunteers Engaged in Gender Response Technical Solution as an environmental specialist. And uh, it has been a good experience and uh, I'm excited to share with you the adoption of clean energy here in Kenya. I've been based in uh, Wakulima Dairy, one of the implementing partners uh, by VWB. And uh, we have been helping the local community in transforming holistically. And uh, we're also going to discuss more about it uh, in our discussion about biogas. So with that, I will request Laura to start uh, sharing the presentation. And also, can you allow me to put off the video for now? We we'll also talk about what biogas means to animal health and also what is the future of the implementing biogas here in Kenya. So I'd like to start this talk with uh, defining uh, One Health. I'm sure most of you have heard about it, but uh, for those who maybe may not be aware, One Health, according to WHO, it's an approach uh, to designing and implementing programs, policies, legislations, and research in which multiple sectors communicate and work together. So basically it's a concept that uh, recognizes that the health of animals and the health of environment and the health of humans are all interrelated. Meaning that when the health of the environment is affected, it's going to have the ripple effects on the human and also on the animals. Likewise, with the health of uh, Likewise, with the health of animals, if the animal is affected, it will also affect the environment and the human health. And this is the concept that the VWB has been, uh, this is the concept that VWB has been uh, adopting here in, uh, in, in Kenya through their programs that is called VET, so Volunteers Engaged in the Gender Response Technical Solution, where they have been looking at approaching the whole, approaching uh, helping the farmers holistically, you know, through, the, through their human health, through the environmental health and animal health. Personally, I have been uh, working for the environmental health, but that, that does not mean that I've not been helping in human health or animal health, because as we go on, you're going to see how all of them are interrelated. So what is this biogas that we are talking about? So biogas is a renewable fuel that is produced by the breakdown of organic matter, such as animal waste, by microorganisms in the absence of oxygen. So when that process happens, it has to happen in, a pro, in, a, in an area that does not, or in an environment that does not have any oxygen in it for the microorganisms to work on the biosphere for the biogas to be produced. So that biogas uh, we are talking about is generally methane gas, but people just call it biogas. And what that's what it's tapped for the energy uses, uh, like lighting and, uh, and cooking. But we also get a byproduct that is called bioslurry that is then used in farming. Uh, you can see those two images that I've used there. We have two types of biogases. We have one that is called the fixed dome, that is in the first, in the first uh, diagram. And then in the second diagram, we have another one that is made out of some polythene materials. In our case, we uh, opted to go with what is called fixed dome because that one is more durable. And we wanted to help farmers uh, construct something that is going to help them for a long time. With the other kind of bell gas, I don't say that, I'm not saying that it's bad, but it's not as quite as durable as the first one. So that's why we opted for the first kind of biogas, the one that is called fixed dome. As you can see, it's usually, uh, maybe I can first uh, take you through how it works. Uh, we have an inlet here, and this is where 
the cow dung is put after it has been diluted with some water. And once the cow dung has been, or the manure has been put in the inlet, it then goes to what we call a biodigester. And this is where now that process I was talking about, a uh, microorganism working on that uh, manure. By now it's called slurry. Now this is where the microorganism works on that slurry in the absence of oxygen uh, to produce the methane gas. And that methane gas is what we are calling biogas, which is then tapped and uh, transported using pipes, uh, maybe to the kitchen or to the house, where it's used for energy purposes. But then after that, we also get the bioproducts, which comes out through, we have an expansion chamber here, which controls the action that is going or the reaction that is going on here in the biodigester. And then when the whole process is done, uh, that slurry or the bio slurry comes out through the outlet. And now that bio slurry is what is used for farming. And so this gas then is tapped and uh, and used as uh, as fuel, either for cooking or for lighting, or for even any other purposes, depending on the size of the biogas. The other side is where we have the other type of uh, biogas, which is not totally permanent. It's made out of a polythene uh, material, but it's it can act, uh, equally work, only that it's not as durable as the first one. So I hope by now, now we all understand what biogas is as we continue with this discussion. So on the ground, that is how the biogas looks like. Uh, we talked of an inlet. This is the manure uh, you can, in the first diagram. This is the manure which is used to, to feed the biogas. This one, uh, you can see this farmer had been keeping the manure so that after the completion of the, uh, of the biogas construction should have enough manure to fill the biodigester for the production of the of the gas now. So this is the manure that is used. It's not uh, put in as it is. First, it's diluted with some water. There's some ratio that they use. And then it's fed inside. This is the inlet, the one I showed you earlier, this inlet. So on the ground, this is the inlet where the slurry is, uh, no, the mixture of the manure and the water is what we are calling slurry, where it's fed inside here. The biodigester is, constructed underground, but you can see some small uh, some small thing in here. This is where the gas has been tapped and then the piping has been done all the way to the kitchen, but the biodigester is underground. And then you can see the expansion chamber here and the small hole, I don't know whether it's quite clear, that is where the bell slurry or the outlet is and that's where it's collected. So on the second uh, photo, that is the construction of the biodigester. It's usually, as I said, it's constructed uh, underground. So in this case, it is around here. And it's constructed in such a way that after it's completed, there will be no oxygen that will be getting in. And that's where now we get the anaerobic process where now the microorganisms are able to produce the methane gas out of the bio slurry. And that gas then it's stopped and uh, used for various purposes. So I hope now we all have a clear picture of how uh, biogas is constructed, how it looks like, and uh, probably how it works. So why are we trying to advocate for the use of biogas uh, for our dairy farmers? And one of the main attraction of biogas technology is its ability to generate biogas out of organic waste that is abundant and freely available. In our case here, we are working with dairy farmers and for the organic waste here, it means the manure from their, from their cows. This is something that they get freely. They don't buy, they get it on daily basis. And the good thing is that even when they use that manure, as we are going to see further in our discussion, even as they use that manure to make the slurry for biogas, it does not mean that they'll not get enough manure for their farm. It simply means that even that manure now will even be of better quality to use in their farm than if it were, they were just taking it to their farms directly from, from their cow pens. So uh, this is a, uh, 
a free input. It's, a, it's not something they'll have to keep buying every other day. It's just something that they have it there available every day. And it's something that they can add value to it and they can benefit much from it. So we have talked earlier that the main output of a biogas plant is the methane gas, which people basically call biogas. And it's valid for its uses in cooking and lighting. We have the farmers who now are already using it for their cooking and lighting purposes. And I've also talked of the slurry that is used uh, in the farm. So it's very good uh, since it has more soil nutrients and it has fertilizing properties uh, compared to the raw manure that would have been applied directly from the cow pens. So biogas has a lot of benefits and these are some of the benefits that we can talk uh, for today. First and foremost, we have talked of it as being a source of energy. And most of the time when farmers are installing biogases this is usually their main reason so that they can get a, a cleaner source of energy. This is better because first biogas energy is clean compared to the use of firewood. It does not produce smoke. So that's why we call it clean energy. And it does not also uh, destroy the environment as we're going to discuss uh, uh, further. So most of the, one of the biggest benefits that farmers uh, or that attract farmers to installing biogas is its use as an energy source. So once they do it, they stop using the firewood and all that. They use it for their heating and for their lighting and also for other activities in their farms, like maybe chopping off of napier, you using the, the choppers, depending on the size of the biogas. So there's energy that comes out of the biogas depends with the source of, uh, with the size of the biogas, the bigger it is, the more energy a farmer is able to get from that biogas. The other benefit is the environmental benefit. As we know right now, we are in an era where all of us are suffering from the effects of climate change. So this is one thing that is going to combat the effect of climate change. It's one of the mitigation measures because once farmers start using the biogas, they're going to stop depending on firewood for their fuel. So that means that they're going to be reduced deforestation. And that is what we are looking for. Even in our country, uh, currently uh, the president uh, has discouraged or even banned the use of uh, firewood and mostly cutting down of trees. So this will not only benefit the farmer, it will benefit the country, it will benefit the whole world as it's going to, 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 to counteract the effects of the climate change. The other benefit that uh, biogas brings to farmers or anyone else using it is the economic benefit. First and foremost, we have seen that the bio slurry has the fertilizing uh, properties. It has better, it's of better quality compared to direct manures from the cow pens. So this means that this farmer is able to get more produce from the farm compared if the farmer was just using raw manure and with better produce from the farms it means that this farmer we're going to uh, sell more benefits and probably get more money compared if he was not using the bio slurry from the uh, from the biogas another economic benefit comes from the time that is saved from the use of biogas we all know that time is money. And biogas really saves time, especially to the women, because all the time that they have been using for looking for firewood and all that lighting uh, firewood, that is quite, quite uh, time consuming. And now with biogas, they just wake up and light. It, it, it just works as you're going to see in the photos ahead, like just these other kind of uh, gas cookers that we use in our homes. So it saves a lot of time for the women and that time that is saved, the women are able to use it uh, for other economic activities, probably going to the market, selling their produce or even helping their families in, uh, in their farm activities, uh, which is also going to benefit them economically. We have also talked a lot about benefits to agriculture through bioslurry. We are going to see how some of those farmers who benefited from the uh, from VWB project, uh, how they are uh, benefiting from the bioslurry from the biogas to increase their produce. And most 
uh, importantly is the benefits to the women. We have talked a lot about it. Women are the ones who are involved in a lot of cooking. So most of the time they're the people who are in the kitchen. And we see most of the time when they're in the kitchen using firewood, they inhale a lot of smoke because fire produces a lot of smoke, which leads to negative uh, health effects to those women. And now with the use of this clean energy, uh, the smoke will not be affecting them. So it's going to benefit women even health-wise, economically, you know, so because they're going to save time and they're going to stop uh, inhaling all that smoke they inhale when they're using firewood. So VWB has been uh, running a, a, a biogas implementation or construction project where they have been assisting some of the farmers to install biogases. Uh, actually, biogas installation is not quite cheap here in Kenya, according to the According to farmers, it's a little bit expensive. And most of the farmers, uh, as much as they know the benefits of this biogas, as much as they really want to install it, most of them are not able to do it due to the financial constraints. Uh, it's, uh, that amount is not quite easy for a farmer to fade it at once. And in most cases for the constructors that would want to be paid maybe the full amount at once before they construct the biogas to the farmer which farmers are feeding it a bit hard, but VWB brought uh, or introduced a project where they have been giving some small boost to the farmers so that they can uh, construct the biogases. And with that project, we were able to help uh, 21 farmers to uh, construct or to, to, to put biogases in their farms. And uh, some of these photos you're seeing are some of those farmers and you can see the smells on their faces for the first one, the first photo. It's one of the ladies who installed or who was assisted by VWB through Global Affairs Canada to install the biogas. And you can see how happy she is. In the second photo uh, at the front, that is the one of the operations managers at Mukuroine and then me. And then behind there, you can see a couple with their small child. They were also assisted in uh, installing the biogas, which they're really benefiting. In fact, with the second farmer, uh, we are going to see how he's also using the bio slurry uh, for farming. And uh, I would like to draw your attention in the first photo. And that is the kitchen of that lady. You can just see how much smoke has affected that kitchen. The, the, the dark colors or the, yeah, the darkness in that kitchen is out of the use of smoke out of use of the firewood. So you can imagine if this smoke had the capacity of uh, making that kitchen look like that, you can also imagine the effect it can have on the person who is using that kitchen, you know, health wise. Uh, so this one is now with a new biogas, uh, with a new clean energy, we are sure that this farmer now, her health will be good. It will not uh, be exposed to diseases, to respiratory diseases. And now that she'll be able to save a lot of time, you know, it's going to cook faster compared to firewood. And it's also going, she's also going to benefit from the best slurry. So these are the photos from some of the farmers that benefited from that program. We have more photos of other farmers. Uh, I wish we could capture all of them, but we only sampled a few. They have a total of 21, but these are just four families uh, that we are able to put their photos here. Uh, there are also farmers that have benefited from that program. You can all see the smiles on their face and they have been so grateful. Every time you speak to them, they are always so grateful to VWB and Global Affairs Canada for that support because sometimes a farmer or someone just needs a small boost for them to be able to implement what, you, what you've been training them. So sometimes as much as you train them on the importances of using biogas and how much it's going to help them, they may find the cost very high, but once you give them that small boost, they're even willing to sacrifice the bigger amount so that they can adopt that, uh, that technology. So these are some of the farmers. And with the second photo, those farmers are even using the bio slurry, uh, not the bio slurry, they, they're using the biogas itself, the, the biogas for energy to heat for their chicken rearing. Uh, you know, chicken rearing uh, requires a lot of heat. So they're using that to heat for their poultry farming. 
So we have a total of 21 families that benefited from this, uh, from this program. And we are hoping that as the program goes on, maybe even more farmers will continue benefiting. So for the partners that uh, we used in this program, the one for installation of biogases to the 21 farmers, we only dealt with biogas constructors. You can see on that photo, uh, some of, one of the constructors working or constructing the biodigester, the one I was saying that is usually constructed at a grout. And when we were selecting these partners, we did a very strict procurement procedures using the uh, procurement procedures of our implementing partners. In my case here in Mokoroine, we use the Mokoroine daily uh, procurement procedures because we wanted to ensure that we get the best contractors for these farmers. Biogas construction needs a lot of skills and you cannot just get any contractor to come and construct it. So we ensured that we got the best uh, constructors for them. And we are glad because out of, in all those 21 biogases that we constructed, none has been faulty. All of them are already working. The farmers are already using them. There has been no complaint from the farmers. And we are glad that we got the best, uh, the best contractors for this work. So we also did a very thorough background check before we gave them this job. We visited the Belgas's plants that they had constructed earlier just to make sure that they are well qualified and well experienced in this work. We also did referral checks from people that they have worked with and with organizations that they have worked with. And before they started this work, we made sure that we also signed contracts just to safeguard the farmers to ensure that they'll get the best, uh, the best job or the best quality uh, out, of the, out of the construction work. So that's how we secured our, our contractors. But for the farmers, there was a very high demand of the farmers who wanted to benefit from this program. It's so unfortunate that we couldn't assist them due to the resources that we had, but the backlog is very big. There are so many farmers that are very much still interested, and uh, we are hoping in one way or another that they are going to benefit from it. They are going to get a way of uh, managing to get the biogases, because as we have seen, it's going to really help them in very many ways. So how does biogas uh, assist in animal health? Uh, sorry that that diagram, that photo is not quite clear, but basically what's there, it's a cow in its calf pen and next to it, there's a lot of manure that has been kept next to the cow pen. And uh, what we know is that when we keep a lot of manure next to the cow pen or, if, or even inside the cow pen, we are risking that cow from contracting mastitis because we know mastitis comes mostly out of the lack of cleaning nest inside the cow pen or near the cow pen. So you can see a lot of manure has been stockpiled there. Probably when the farmer uh, removed that manure from the cow pen, didn't have somewhere they could take it for you use at that time. And you also know it's not quite advisable to go and apply raw manure when it's still wet to the plants. So in most cases, farmers would just pile up that manure next to the cow pen as they wait for it to dry up a bit so that they can apply it in their farms. And what this does is that it puts that animal at the risk of contracting uh, mastitis because it's quite near to that manure. And how now this biogas is helping in prevention of mastitis is that this manure is uh, put into or it's fed. We, we, call, we, we always say you're feeding the biogas. So this manure will be fed into biogas immediately. It's removed from the cow pen. So there'll be no piling of that manure next to the cow pen. So every day the farmer removes the manure from the cow pen, he will have to feed it into the biogas so that the biogas can produce the energy that this farmer needs. So at least that one, it will help, uh, it will help from paling of the manure next to the cow pen, because every day the farmer will have to be clearing all that manure and feed it to the biogas so that the biogas can, uh, can produce energy. The, the biogas needs to be fed almost daily 
quickly for its continue for its continue uh, production of gas. If you stop feeding it, then at a point it stop working. So the farmer is forced to use that manure daily and feed it in the biogas, which at the end of it produces even better manure for better quality in the farm. So our farmers who we assisted in the installation of the bell gases have been benefiting from the bell slurry. You can see uh, that is bell slurry that has been applied in uh, Napier grass. And we talked of how uh, strong it is or how of better quality it is compared to the raw manures from the cow pen. So those who have already installed the bell gases are already benefiting from the bell slurry because now they are applying directly to their farms, uh, to their fodder. And this is at the end of it going to benefit the cow. It's like a, a circular economy because once the bell slurry now comes out and it's fed into the fodder, this fodder will be more healthier, which then is going to be fed into the cow and the cow will produce more milk. With more milk, it will mean more, also more manure which then will also go back into the biogas, produce more bio slurry, which will go back into the production of the fodder and it's going to continue helping the animal, both the animal and the farmer because the farmer is also going to benefit economically because when the cow produces more milk, it means even the farmer also will benefit economically. So this is how our farmers or the farmers that we've been working with are benefiting from the bell study through the application into their farms and uh, specifically into their fodder for their animals because they also want to take care of their animals. That is their economic activity. And they are also applying it into their kitchen gardens. Uh, in the first photo, you can see uh, this farmer is actually uh, collecting that bell slurry. This is the outlet part of it, the outlet part of the biogas. So this farmer has constructed an extra uh, storage for that bell slurry for the times that he's not able to use all of it at once. So he's collecting that bell slurry and uh, applying even in the other farms uh, that are far from that bell gas. And on the right, you can see uh, how his kitchen garden is doing well. He has been applying uh, that bell slurry to the kitchen garden and you can see how healthy his vegetables are. Uh, this is still uh, another kitchen garden that is benefiting from the bell slurry. Uh, this farmer does not have much of a uh, space, but he has invented ways of, uh, uh, of growing vegetables. And he's also tapping that bell slurry and applying it to his vegetables uh, for the benefit of the family and also maybe economically because they also sell these vegetables, the surplus vegetables, they sell it to the neighbors. So the biogas is not only helping them or in uh, cooking, but it's also helping them in farming. Another use of bell slurry that is, might not be quite common to people, but it's very beneficial. Uh, it's in pottery keeping. Uh, the farmers are taught how to mix that bell slurry with the chicken feed. And uh, that makes uh, the chicken feed quite uh, more nutritious for the chicken. And those farmers who install the bell gases, some have even already started uh, poultry farming because they want to maximize on the bell slurry. There's so many uses that that slurry can be used to. So they are also using it to rear chicken. Uh, that is a farmer who is uh, using the bell slurry to feed the chicken. Uh, sorry, we cannot see the chicken, but that is where the chicken feed at and the bell slurry have been mixed with the chicken feed. So it's not only helping uh, in, the en in the energy and in the kitchen garden, but it's also helping in a poultry farming. So what is the future of uh, biogas implementation in Kenya? There's a survey that was done in 2016 uh, that looked at the factors that are in inhibiting or the adoption of biogas technology in Kenya. We all know that biogas is quite helpful to farmers, but then the intake or the uptake of that, the uptake of that technology has been quite low. So a study was done to see what is making that uptake that low, the uptake of use of biogas. 
And the things that came out strongly were lack of capital. Uh, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, it's quite capital intensive. It's not, uh, mostly it goes to around, uh, a standard biogas can go to around 1,000 US dollars. And uh, that is not small money for just a small scale farmer. So most of them cited lack of capital. There was also limited dissemination of technical knowledge. Most of them do not know how it works, how it operates, how it's constructed. And there was also lack of sufficient knowledge on the operation and maintenance of the biodigesters. As I said earlier, uh, when I was talking about our co contractors is that biogas requires a lot of skills. So there was a, a lot of skills to construct it. So there was also that lack of sufficient knowledge on the operation and maintenance of biodigesters. But through this program, the, the VETS program, uh, we've been working so much with pharma to capacity build them on this. Uh, we've been training them on uh, the importances of biogas, how it's going to benefit them, how it's also going to save them money because when you compare the amount that is used for the installation and the amount that the farmer uses for the continuous use of firewood or buying charcoal, you'll find that this capital is even a bit less compared to the amount, the money the farmer is going to use on firewood or charcoal or even these other kind of gas over maybe five years. So we've been trying to show them that it's going to be economical. It's going to actually, it's going to save money to them because you're also going to save on the money that they use for their fertilizers. And uh, the farmers have started seeing uh, the reality. They have started uh, buying in the idea. And most of them now have started uh, uh, trying to see how they can uh, get the funds for the for the construction of those biogases so that they can benefit from all those benefits that we talked about. Now, we are also having a lot of co uh, contractors who are not being trained uh, on uh, constructing biogases, like the ones that we used. They benefited from a program that uh, trained contractors on biogas construction. So the knowledge now is increasing. And also the government, due to the ban of the cutting down of trees by the government of Kenya, most farmers now are looking for alternatives because at the end of the day, they need this energy, they need to cook. So they're looking for alternatives because now it's illegal to cut down trees here in Kenya. And most farmers now have also learned the importance of bell slurry. We have farmers who are actually putting up that burger specifically for farming. They are just getting that energy as a as a byproduct, you know. The way you were saying that the bell slurry is the bell product for them, bell slurry is their main thing that they constructed the bell gas for. So most farmers have learned the importances of those bell slurry in their farms, uh, and they are now trying to adopt that new technology. And for that reason, now the demand of bell gas has become high. Uh, we have done a lot of training, especially in the areas where. Uh, where we have been uh, involved uh, in uh, capacity building of the farmers. We have done a lot of intensive training on the importances of biogases, how it works, uh, how they can use that bio slurry, and the farmers are starting to appreciate that, and the demand is starting to become very high. The percentage that uh, is using biogas, uh, specifically in these two counties that we have been working with is very small. I would actually say it's actually less than almost even less than 10%. So there's still a lot of work to be done. There's still a lot of potentials uh, in here and not just only in here, in the whole of the country, because now most farmers have known the importance of biogas. They have seen the effect of climate change because farmers are the worst hit uh, by the effects of climate change. We are trying to teach them to adopt smart farming and use of clean energy is one of the ways that they can adopt smart farming. So the demand of biogas right now is very high and uh, farmers are looking forward to how they can benefit from it. So that is my talk today uh, about biogas. There's so much that we can talk about it, uh, but for now, uh, due to time, we are going to only, uh, we're going to add up that. Uh, and this point, I'm going to hand over to Esther for any questions. Thank you.
Thank you, Faith, for such a wonderful presentation that you have done. And definitely there are a lot of questions that are uh, with me here. Um, maybe you can inform what were the size of the biogas or the size of the productions that were involved. What was the size of the biogases that were installed? What was the consideration for the number of animals? And was the milk uh, production part of the consideration? All right, thank you, Esther, for that question. Uh, it's a very important part, probably, that I, I, I didn't talk about. But um, most biogases that we constructed, we constructed 21 biogases, and all of them ranged from 8 cubic meter to 12 cubic meter. That is just an average kind of biogas for a small scale farmer. Uh, biogas uh, sizes are determined by the number of cows that a farmer has. You cannot get a biogas if you have less than two cows because less than one cow cannot produce enough manure for. I've talked about daily feeding of that biogas. So one cow cannot uh, be enough to produce enough manure to feed that biogas. So a farmer needs a minimum of two cows. Now with two cows, that's when you can get the least size. The least size is six cubic meter, but we really try to discourage that to our farmers we are working with because it does not produce quite a lot of energy. And we wanted them to get something that is going to benefit them for a long time. So for all the farmers that uh, we worked with, uh, they installed from eight cubic meter to 12 cubic meter. But we also have uh, biogases that are bigger than that, depending on the number of cows. For the 12 cubic meter, a, a farmer had to have maybe at least five cows, that would be enough. But the people who install even bigger, biogases than that. We have even 24 cubic meter. We have institutions who install biogases, uh, but for them now they have herds of cows which can uh, sustainably, uh, you know, maintain or keep that biogas. So the number of cows are very important. Yes, for the size of the biogas that a farmer needs. Thank you, um, and how, how long did it take to, to install one biogas system? And for how long can one use a biogas? Ah, thank you. Um, biogas construction is not uh, a lot of work. Within two weeks, the construction of biogas is done. It does not require a lot of time. So with two weeks are quite enough for a whole biogas to be constructed. That includes the uh, excavation works, the construction works, the piping and all that. What may take time is the filling of the biodigester with that biostrategy because before now the biogas starts or the biodigester starts producing the methane gas, it must be full with biostrategy. So depend, that depends on how much farmer had kept the manure for the initial feeding of the biogas. But once now the farmer has filled that biodigester initially, uh, it becomes easy because the farmer will just be feeding about uh, two buckets of manure every day. So for the construction, it takes a maximum of two weeks. And can we use manure from other animals or does it have to be specifically cows? Yeah, we can uh, use manure from there. Those who are using from pigs and all that. In our case here, we are talking of manure from cows because we were dealing with dairy farmers. Uh, we, uh, our implementing partner here in Kenya is Mukuroino Akulima Dairy and Meru Cooperative Dairy. These uh, partners deal uh, mostly with the dairy cows, uh, with the dairy farmers, sorry. So that's why in our program, we focused on the dairy farmers, on the cow manure. But you can also use other kind of manure. And can one mix the manure or if you use, if you choose to use the cow manure, then you stick to the cow. If you're using pigs, then you stick to pigs. Or can one decide because they have all these animals on my land, they can mix them. Yeah, you can, but then you'd need advice from an expert on how to, the ratios which you need to just mix. Just don't just mix, make sure the person who is constructing for you uh, advises you on the ratios that you need to mix. Uh, talking of it, uh, with all our farmers, the one, the 21 farmers we worked with, we made sure that they got trainings from the contractors on how they'll be mixing their manure with water because it also depends, it, it, it requires a given ratio for those uh, slurry to be productive. So we ensured that our farmers got training before the contractors left their farms on how they'll be, on the ratios they'll be using for the mixing of the manure. 
-huh. And um, I think I have like one or two more questions. Um, would you explain in what way the quality of the bell slide is improved over the raw manure for, for use in fertilizing crops? Okay, we talked about uh, the process that goes on in the biodigester, mm, the anaerobic process. So that's where the microorganism works down on the uh, on that bell slurry for the methane gas. But still, as it's working on uh, for the production of the methane gas, that breakdown that is done by the microorganism, it's also beneficial to the manure because it makes the nutrients become uh, faster released from the manure once they are, the, the manure has been broken down by those microorganisms. So by the time uh, that bio slurry is being applied in the farm, the nutrients will be easily released to the plants compared if that manure was just applied directly uh, from the cow pen or it was raw manure. So it's just the whole of that anaerobic process that happens in the digester that improves the quality of that manure, of not what you're calling the bell slurry, uh, and makes it um, better to the plant. The plants are able to absorb those nutrients faster. The breakdown has already been initiated. So the absorption of the nutrients will be faster compared to the raw manure. Uh -huh. And maybe just to go slightly off tangent, um, I know you've done a lot of research and studies still on uh, biogas installations, and we have specifically focused on Kenya here. Would you maybe respond if we can, if biogas is being applied in other countries? Yeah, sure. There's a lot, like let's say, for example, in China. There's a lot of use of biogas in China because actually most of these uh, materials or the, pro the technologies, some of them are coming from China. There's also a lot of uh, biogas uh, in most of the country. I'm also sure probably also in Canada, it could be there because there's a lot of dairy farming, but this is a technology that has, uh, is being adopted all over the world because uh, it's quite uh, economical when you look at it. It's quite economical because you only need the manure so it's, an, it's a technology that is being adopted all over the world, uh, even in the, in the most developed countries. It's, a, it's something that people are finding quite uh, beneficial when you look at uh, the benefits, both environmentally, uh, to the humans, also to the world, uh, to the animals. So it's a technology that is being adopted all over the world. Thank you, Faith. Um, I would like to wind up there. From a, with a comment from one of our partners who's indicated that um, your trainings and awareness sessions have led to more biogases being constructed beyond the number you mentioned, and that there are farmers who have since constructed more biogases um, since you left. So we, it, it is a good sign that there is still adoption and room for adoption by, by more people coming on board. I'd like to get back to Laura. She can um, give us a bit of a brief on if you'd like to volunteer with VWB. Where, what do you do? Where do you go? Where do you check? Yeah. Welcome, Laura. Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks so much for that. And I just want to extend a, a huge thank you to Faith for that incredible presentation and all of that information. Um, that I hope everyone enjoyed and learned quite a bit from. Thank you so much, Esther, as well, for um, giving us a bit of information about Kenya and our programs there, as well as uh, the Q&A. Um, so uh, we're, we're almost at the hour, so we're gonna wrap things up here, but um, thank you all so much for coming out and attending. Um, we so appreciate you spending your time to learn more about our work. Uh, if you are interested in learning more or perhaps learning about volunteering yourself, um, please go to vetswithoutborders.ca slash volunteers. Um, there's lots of postings listed there, some being, uh, I believe, in Kenya. So you can check that out uh, and reach out to us if you have questions about uh, those positions. Um, we, just as a, a bit of um, other context and information, uh, we are with our VETS program in um, six countries, um, three being in Africa, Kenya, Senegal, and Ghana, as well as being in Asia, uh, Cambodia, Vietnam, and Laos. And um, 
we are working at, on a one health model uh, focused on um, animals, humans, and the environment in all of these countries. So uh, you can learn more about that as well uh, at our website. Um, thank you so much. And uh, please uh, reach out to uh, us if you have any more questions. Uh, and uh, yes, thank you again for joining. Enjoy the rest of your of your days and evenings.